Okay YouTube, so uh, another little repair video, I wanted to do an Amiga 500 Plus It's off eBay, it was £12.50 Plus postage, so it's fair enough I think uh, I don't know what the 247's all about, it wasn't a raffle I wanted to have a go at fixing this because I know the battery's going to leak and I saw the Gadget UK's video and I wanted to see if I could get this one going Interestingly, someone's been in here <coughs> but No one seems to have been in there Yeah, it's the usual story Battery's leaked, you can see that all over the board. <coughs> this chip's taking a beating, you have no idea what we're dealing with. Not really too sad actually, it's pre contained. That chip there, seen that days, I'll check that. Um, but the rest of the board, I've seen a lot worse. So it don't look too bad underneath. Um, not leak through. A pair of scissors, so that's off. Let me really see what we've got left. That. Warning, do not drink white wine vinegar on our bits and pieces. It's the usual badly held camera angle as we uh, have a go with the cotton buds and the... So after a bit of a scrub up, with the that wire brush, Still letting it soak. That's what we're getting to. Not that bad, actually. I'm wondering whether this chip here is gone because it's that's that's now clean, but it did have a lot of corrosion. I might take that off. Okay, so I lifted that chip off. It really did not want to come off. I lifted a couple of traces, so I need to repair those, clean it up. And we'll see what we've got left. Put a socket on it, see if it still works. Okay, so somewhat cleaned up. You can see the holes there. Just expose the trace as near as I can to them and try and reuse the eye holes. I don't think it will work. So, first of all, I'm going to reflow these um, tracks of solder. Let's do that. I showed you how to do that in another video, so I can't hold it and do these fine traces. We haven't started yet because the worse, the more I've gone at it, the worse I've realised it is. I think that's pretty much got it. Obviously, got to patch these bits up, but I'm going to do this bit first. So let's do that. Okay, so there's solder flow. That's not too sad around that side. I've done this side up to about there. I haven't done these yet. I'm missing one whole track there, which went up the end of the solder sucker. So that's got to be repaired. Um, so yeah, just check continuity. Where it hasn't quite met up, that's where the, some of the solder mask is still on. And where it's like this, that's where I never cleaned it up like 100%, so just be a bit more patient and then you should get a better result. But Well, that was a royal pain in the arse. Um, but now, you can see, I've basically made good with wires. I wasn't going to use the insulation, but I thought better of it. So now, I've made basically where the eyelets came out I've made replacement eyelets with bits of wire going through the hole and if the camera ever focuses you'll see how that works so now all that remains is to check there's no bridging which I don't think there is and that's the repair job the socket will go I'll find it damned socket it will go on top it won't sit quite straight because of the wires but better than not working at all there we go sockets back on no one would ever doubt no, they would know but it's a cleaner job I think and it's not bad I'm, not, I'm, I'm quite happy with that there's no bridging or anything uh, everything's connected up from a distance, not bad, not bad, shit back in, see what happens. Um, we have got a clock, it's not a particularly great clock, unless you remember the scale, but I can see a clock, so pin 15 on the CPU, this is the bottom, this is the top of the CPU, so it's this side, 15, make sure it's not touching anything else, make sure, God's sake, make sure that this is not touching anything other than ground. 
Okay, so I'm getting a blue screen, so I've checked my workmanship against the known working system in Mega 500, but it's the same layout. Continuity between the pins on these chips all checks out fine. Double check this, I suspect it's going to be the Agnes chip. I'm getting 10 flashes of the LED, which I've, and, a, and, a, and a green screen, and then, oh, sorry, a blue screen, and then nothing. The memory thing, it might be that there's a conductive path being formed by corrosion, and they were quite bad, so I'm going to clean them up and try it again. Okay, so I've swapped out on a known working board. CPU, that's fine. Kick ROM, that's fine. <coughs> I'm waiting for the PLCC extractor. <coughs> I did reseat Agnes made no difference Receipted, swapped out Denise, that's fine swapped out the odd CIA sorry, the even CIA, both fine <coughs> Paula and Denise, all fine so, and what I did was took a suspected chip on a good board rather than the other way around ok, so all the RAM's off uh, not a single trace lifted at all Six pages, and the biggest trick is <coughs> if you can't get the pins out, refly them with new leaded solder, and then suck them out again. If you still end up with dollops on the top, and keep going with that. If they can actually not get, there was a couple of top corners couldn't get. Soak a bit of wick in a bit of flux, and then try and take it off as much as you can. But the main thing was <coughs> wiggling the pins from the bottom fine. It don't mean the pins are quite long and it don't mean that they've actually moved to the top. But the best thing I found was doing this left handed. Actually I won't do left handed. The best thing I found was poke the pin in with a sharp sort of um, this is like a solder tool thing. And then also you can get leverage on one pin to pop the other one out, pop the other one out, pop the other one out, pop the other one out. What you find is that's what's holding it. And once they've been free, it literally will walk off the board. You can see that those pins look a little bit iffy. The third one from the left is broken. I'm not sure whether that's deliberate or not. I will soon find out. That third pin is not actually touching the chip. Okay, so getting another socket. What I've done is I took the Agnes out, bent that one pin over on itself carefully with a pair of rat tail pliers, snip the bottom of it off. Okay, should be able to get that in and out okay as well. It's not retrofitted yet, it's actually not in bad nick, keyboard's a little bit yellow, but here we go.